Meet my children, again, if you've met them already. They are growing up in a place where the food they eat could be a very real threat to their long-term health. In many parts of the world, but especially in the United States, where these three children are, are living, the decisions that I make about what our family eats and how we teach our children to eat could actually end up saving their lives. At present, one in three children living in the U.S. is either overweight or obese. Our children are facing an epidemic of a disease that threatens to leave them with a shorter life expectancy than their parents. And for the most part, this public health crisis is the result of a culture of eating that encourages our children to eat heavily processed foods in large quantities. We live in a place that sort of resembles a giant food fair where fast food is available everywhere and our children quickly learn that it's socially acceptable to eat it at any time of the day. At school, where many American children spend seven or more hours every day of the week, the foods that are offered to them often sort of perpetuate these unhealthy eating habits. Many of the school lunch programs in the U.S still emphasize heavily processed foods in large quantities. When they're not at school, all too often, our children spend their time in front of screens. The average American home has more TVs than people in it, and a television is on for almost seven hours per day in the average home. So that means that our children are less physically active than they were in the past, and they're also being exposed to more food marketing for you guessed it, fast, heavily processed foods. If we add to this the fact that portion sizes of these processed foods have increased dramatically in recent years, it's easy to see why we find ourselves faced with an epidemic of disease. Obesity rates are currently highest in the United States, but as the culture of eating that we associate with the US spreads to other countries around the world, we see this disease potentially becoming more of a global problem. One of the reasons that we need to address this problem urgently, especially when we see high obesity rates amongst our children, is that obesity in childhood can affect almost every organ system in the developing child. Diabetes is probably the biggest concern. This is a disease that's long been associated with obesity and it can lead to serious long-term health consequences for our children. Things like early heart disease, loss of vision, loss of kidney function, and even loss of limbs. As a parent, the threat of childhood obesity is, frankly, it's just scary. It's a largely preventable disease that threatens to disrupt my children's lives at a time when they're supposed to be in their prime. I may not be able to protect them from every danger, but I will do my very best to protect them from this one. So let's look at how we can do that. I'm going to tell you the story of a busy parent. Let's pretend it's me. Come into my house and meet my three children again. I often feel that there isn't enough time in the day, and I know other parents feel that way too. For many families, processed or fast or convenience foods seem like the answer to that problem. In the US, in fact, in 2004, we helped our children consume seven and a half billion pounds of frozen French fries, if you can believe it. And as, as standard portion sizes for these processed foods get bigger, our children's idea of what a normal portion looks like actually gets bigger as well. Several studies have actually also shown that bigger portions encourage us and our children to eat more than we need or even more than we want of these foods. In the US, we're also world leaders in the consumption of sodas and sweetened drinks. These drinks add large amounts of empty calories to our children's diets. Even energy drinks and fruit juices are surprisingly high in sugar something that our children certainly don't need more of in their diets. And really, it's all 
about the amount. A small glass of freshly squeezed orange juice, for example, can be a very sensible part of a child's healthy breakfast. But in general, our children are drinking too many sweetened beverages when the better choice most of the time would be a thirst-quenching glass of pure water. Okay, if we move out of the kitchen into the family room in this house, we see a television on. As a busy parent, it's often hard to find the time to engage in active play with our children when we come home. Sports teams and other organized activities can be expensive, and they're also logistically challenging. Someone has to get them there and pick them up. And for many families, the most feasible solution is to put the children in front of a screen where they'll not only unfortunately be sedentary, but they'll also be exposed to $1.7 billion worth of advertising aimed directly at them by the big food marketing industry. Um, the products that these, these food marketers are selling to our children are more of the same, processed foods, things like sodas, energy drinks, and sugary cereals. Now, we know that parenthood has also changed in the United States in recent years. Many parents are working longer hours than they did a few decades ago, and I know from personal experience that after a long day, the temptation to stop for a quick, fast meal is huge. Most days, I'm able to find the time to cook something simple instead, but there are days when I'll stop and pick something up. When I do, I try and make a healthy choice, like maybe sushi or Vietnamese food, some sort of less processed version of fast or takeaway food. I certainly don't get it right all of the time. And the last thing I want to do is add to your list of things to feel guilty about. I know as parents, we always carry around a sense of responsibility and guilt about the decisions that we make. But the take home message is really that even the smallest changes can add up to big benefits for our children's health. If, for example, our children's schools don't offer healthy lunch options, we might consider packing a lunch from home with some healthy home-cooked leftovers on most days of the week. Because if we allow them to eat French fries, pizza, and sweetened drinks at school on a regular basis, we could actually be teaching them that this is the right way to eat. They could end up learning it along with their ABCs and their 1-2-3s. I think we also need to be aware of the advertising that our children are exposed to in the world around them. If we can teach them from an early age that the billboards and the commercials are actually trying to sell them things, then they're much more likely to be able to walk away. If we say to them, look at that ad for ice cream, does it make you feel hungry for ice cream? Well, that's just what the, the advertisers wanted you to feel. Let's not fall into that trap. If we can try and make them aware, we have a better chance of having them make the right decisions later on. I once had my three-year-old look at a can of soup in the grocery store with a picture of Dora the Explorer on the side. And he said to me, they got me. I want Dora. <laughs> After I explained to him that Dora wasn't actually in the can, he changed his mind. But you can see how it's important to explain these things to them. So. Here I am living in this fast-paced culture where convenience is valued, sometimes over quality. We spend a lot of time in the car, shuttling back and forth between school and other activities. And sometimes I'm tempted to pick up a meal and feed it to them even while we're driving. No dishes to do, no grocery shopping. But then on most days, I look at those beautiful little people. And somewhere inside me, I find the energy to pull out some veggies and make a quick something. Often they help me and always we end up talking a lot throughout the process of making and eating our food. Friends like visiting us because there's always something good to eat and then we wake up the next day and we do it all over again. And I run out of steam sometimes and I feed them something less than ideal but I'm not aiming for perfection anymore. I'm just aiming to do the best that I can for the people who depend on me, and I know you are too, so I wish you all the best.